Hello, everyone. Everyone. Oh, good <laughs> <job>. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Propulsion Swimming's live reactions and alternative commentary to day one finals of the British Swimming Olympic Trials 2021, or otherwise known as the Selection Meet. I'm your host, Scott, and with me, as always, is Dan. How are you doing tonight, Dan? Yeah, very good. Very excited. It's been a busy week for me because, of course, pools have been open. Uh, mm, you're fine on Monday. So I'm back working, can you believe? The full time furlough has stopped. Uh, and I'm back to coaching, teaching, and all the clubs are back in, all the kids are back in. So it's been great. So actually quite tired, but <laughs> really excited for this because there's going to be some big races on. There is. Yeah. So if you are new to the Propulsion Swimming live stream, basically we are giving a live reaction to the British Swimming feed or their live stream of the swimming. Unfortunately, we don't have permission to share their live stream within our own live stream. It is possible. We don't have permission to do that. Yep. Um, but what we can give you is our experience knowledge on swimming. We, if anyone's listened to our preview podcast, we've gone into massive depths, kind of researching the finals, looking at which swimmers are going to stand out, which ones you need to keep an eye on, and basically picking out some amazing races this evening. There's some really good finals to look at. There is. Well, we've got six races in total, six finals in total, and the names on these final lists are just, well, they're the best in Britain. And some of these swimmers have had to go on PBs to actually make the final. That's mm. how strong yeah. that's how strong the com competition is at the moment. Um, I don't know if we've got time. We've got time. We've got time. We've we'll, got go through, we'll go through every single race. And the first race was a monster. The women's 200, 200 free. Just a, an incredible race. Um, obviously, it was, heats, three, yeah. it was three heats of it. Um, and then of the finalists, three of them PB'd. Mia Slevin was one. Emma Russell was another. And then a huge PB. I think it was like a two-second PB yeah. from um, Tamarin Van Selm. Um, to go uh, under the two-minute mark for the first yeah. time. Yeah. I mean, she'd never gone under 201 before. And she, now she's gone 159. Um, I think it really did help that she was next to Abby Wood. Abby yeah, Wood took definitely. it out quite hard. Um, and we kind of have different sort of opinions on it. You kind of thought that she kind of eased off towards the end. And actually, I thought she tried to keep it going. Um, so it's different. See how she goes. I do believe she has more in the tank, but I do. I think she didn't step off too much. Definitely. So what we'll do is we're we're basically now give a rundown of every event that's happening tonight, and then before mm -hmm. every race, because if you aren't aware, COVID protocols means that there's gonna be quite a big delay in between each race, a five, six, seven minute break in between so they can clean down the blocks clean down the chairs the swimmers can get out of the way so there's no crossover we're gonna have loads of time to preview and dissect each final yes so that's the 200 freestyle there should be hopefully looking at the final i'm expecting five girls to go under that two minute barrier ideally yeah i mean lucy hope would definitely be one um she looked like she took it out quite hard and then maybe eased off towards the end um because there's not as many swimmers as there probably should be, mm. they knew that they could go slightly slower times to make that final. Yeah. Um, so I think she knew that going two minute point would be would make the finals, and that's exactly what she did. She could she could easily do a one fifty eight. That's well in her capability. Um, but you're right. There's going to be loads of swimmers that could be going under two minutes. Uh, but it's got it's a two, it's a two horse race in my eyes yeah. between Freya Anson and Abby Wood. And France and did look very good. Yeah, we'll very get into good. it. We'll get into yeah. it a bit later on. So next up will be the men's 400 meters freestyle. Now this one was a case of a lot of the swimmers did look like they went very comfortably this morning. It did. It did. Yeah, without question. Yeah. There was a few of them who were obviously they knew their place in the final was secure, and it's hard to swim a morning 400 meter freestyle fast. Oh yeah, well I've, I used to do it. And it was, it's, I wouldn't say impossible, but mm. it's extremely hard to go a PB in the morning and then suddenly do another PB a couple of hours later, effectively. Yeah. Um, and actually we did have PBs this morning. We had William Bell and Charlie Hutchinson. They weren't mm. just PBs. They were three second PBs. So it's just monstrous. Um, if they can go even faster tonight, I'd be, I wouldn't be shocked, I suppose, but I'd be um, slightly surprised if they do because they were massive swims. Yeah, I think they were very much dragged along by Daniel Jervis. If I remember correctly, yeah. they were both in his heat and he set a 3.49, quite comfortable, mm -hmm. easy yeah. swim, 3.49, what, two seconds off his PB. He's got a long way to improve to make the Olympic consideration time. It's a yeah. fast one, but though he, he definitely dragged those two guys along to some some fast times. Yeah, well, the Olympic consideration is 3.46.7. Um, which, so, yeah. which would be a PB for him. Um, is it? Has he got it in a tank? 
Yes, I think so. Um, does Tom Dean? I'm not so sure. Maybe a 347 from him mm. is what it's, I'm kind of expecting from him. Um, yep. But I'm pretty sure Dan Jervis would be on the team because I would assume that he'd be either going for the 15 or 800 anyway. Or both. Or both. Uh, yeah, probably both. scheduled this week, doesn't he? He does. He does. It's, uh... it's kind of why I was so surprised he did do a, what, 349 this morning. I thought he would have gone slightly easier considering he is racing an 8 and 15 at this meet. Well, if you take a look at the times, it took a 3.54 to make the final. Um, mm. And I, th- I believe Tom Dean kind of knew that going a 3.52. That looked it was, that was the easiest swim I think I've ever seen. From Tom <laughs> um, to go 3.52 is a very nice, comfortable swim. Yeah. Uh, expect him to go under definitely under 3.50. Um, but it should, be, it should be a good one, actually. Um, like you say, it's difficult to go fast in the morning. So it expects to have some fast swims tonight. Yeah. So then next up is the women's 400 meters individual medley. This one, I wasn't impressed. This morning was slow from a lot of these girls. In fact, a one fifty, a, a four fifty eight made the final, which kind of yeah. surprised me. A lot of these swimmers looked a bit off the boil. Um, well, I mean, you you overheard Andy Jameson when he was commentating this morning, and he was saying that four fifty should be good enough to make the final. And actually, four fifty would place you, I don't know, fifth fastest yeah. going into the final. Um, so in a weird way, yes, kind of disappointing. And actually the biggest disappointment was uh, McClay- Michaela Glenister, who we actually kind of bigged up, didn't we? We did like slightly, a, yeah. As a top three sort of swimmer to um, potentially th- uh, threaten Hannah Miley's time. Mm. Um, and she just didn't look at the races. as She did a 208 and a 203. Um, 45 very- minutes later than yeah, she did. Yeah. It was a very stacked program to start the meet. It seemed a bit odd. Well, I mean, I was kind of finding an excuse for her because um, Freya Colbert did exactly the same thing. Um, oh, yeah. She's qualified yeah. for this 400 IM in lane three. So, you know, she, she's more it's than possible. fine. Uh, it's more than possible. I just think she, um, everyone has a bad meet now and again, has a bad yeah. day. And I just think it was a bad day at the office for her, which is unfortunate because, you know, like we said, I do believe that she could have caused a, a potential upset. Not Maybe not the consideration time, but, you know, maybe it placed a top two potentially. Yeah, consideration time is fast, but we'll we'll go into that before before the event. Yeah, yeah. Then we have the men's hundred meters breaststroke this morning. Adam Peaty looked mighty, mighty impressive. Well, it, it's kind of forgotten just how dominant he is. If it's crazy to say <laughs> that, he went a fifty-seven-seven for the ninth fastest time in the world ever, and we're barely mentioning it. I, I, media. It's, it's just, very weird to say, isn't it? You just yeah. kind of ignore him because he's so far ahead. I'm kind mm. of I want the, I want to know the um the minor sort of positions if you like. And actually, James Wilby went a PB, and that got, yeah, that's I, gone completely I, under the radar. Yeah, I completely missed that. Yeah, um, <laughs> no, he didn't I mean, go a PB. His PB is a 58. So he 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 was. Oh, that's right. Sorry. It. Yes, I'm looking. Oh, got the wrong seconds wrong. You're right. Um, but he's still but, a good swim. I from what I was listening to this morning, he's not actually confirmed for the 100 breaststroke so how Mm. it works is those four swimmers who won medals at the world champs they're confirmed on the team but their event is not picked so he still has to finish top two here to guarantee that spot even though it seems very unlikely that he won't be swimming it yeah i mean well i mean you have to look at ross murdoch and he went 59 5 this morning um, so he could be, he could finish that top two position mm-hmm. um, and really cause an upset and stir the pot. But I do believe that James will be, I think he's got an, enough in a tank to to get that second spot. He did um, look good. We don't need to talk about Adam PC. Oh, we do actually, but we'll talk about that when we, uh, well, when we'll he get gets to the, we'll get get to the ball. And then we've got the women's hundred meters butterfly, which on paper for my, in my opinion, this is the best race of the night. This one is so, so competitive. I think there was four or five girls going personal best this morning to make the final. I think everyone in the final will go sub 60. I'll put that out there. I think they're all capable of doing that. Mm. It's just whether someone gets close to that consideration time. That is, It's a fast consideration time of 57.9, which might be slightly out of reach, but it's going to be a good race no matter what. Yeah, well, this is one of the races I circled in our preview podcast that we did uh, not so long ago. Mm. And it was I kind of ignored the, the consideration time because it is a very tough time to get. But like you say, they should all potentially go under sub-60 here. Um, yeah. And hopefully, if we can get a sub-58, someone's going on that plane. Um, Harriet Jones goes in the fastest, who I was saying was the, the form swimmer and the favourite. Um, and Laura Stevens did a massive, I, didn't, well, I wouldn't say massive, there was 0.2 PB, which I suppose is pretty good on a 100 fly. Um, and also um, Kiana McKean's also did a PB. Um, yeah. So it's going to be a great race. There's yeah, a lot definitely of race. Watch out for that one. 
There's a lot to race for there. Even if they don't get the individual consideration time, there's a mm. spot on the medley relay. Oh, yeah, quite possibly. Oh, no, not, not possibly. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we finished the evening session with the men's 200 meters IM, in which Duncan Scott looked very, very comfortable and good this morning. I think there might be a chance that the British record falls. If not here, I think he's definitely going to get it in Tokyo. He went the Olympic consideration time this morning, so he's already on the plane. He's qualified mm-hmm. for this event. He's now just got to back it up tonight. And yep. the question I've got is how fast will Joe Litchfield go alongside him? Because I think Joe is perfectly capable after this morning swim to be going a 157. Um, he only went three hundredths slower than a consideration anyway. So I yes. would, uh, barring a uh, disaster, I do think he's going to be going at least a, a lower 158, if not a high 157. Mm. Um, and with Duncan Scott next to him, it's only going to drag him along, surely. Exactly, exactly. Um, but Joe Litchfield, his turns are the best in the country, definitely. Um, so if he can, he's going to make up ground on G- Duncan every turn. Yeah. It's just whether the swim speed is quick enough to... I don't think Duncan's under threat of losing the race, but it's just whether Joe can keep up with him, stay on his shoulder, stay on his hip, and hopefully get that 157 time. That would be very nice. There we go. We've got the program for the evening session up on our screens now. Mm-hmm. Somehow they are making six races last an hour. As, <laughs> yeah. as, as we said, there are five, six minutes in between each event, so we are going to have so much time to talk through each one, each consideration time, maybe even each swimmer. If you have any comments or questions during our live feed, please feel free to put them into the YouTube chat. We will answer any questions. We can even bring up comments onto our screen if we think you guys have some amazing points that everyone needs to be made aware of. So shall we get into the first meet or the first race of the night? Mm -hmm. The women's 200 meters freestyle. Now we spoke about it in the buildup. Frey Anderson looked very, very impressive. And so did Abby Wood. Abby Wood has been in really, really good form since ISL. She's been one of the yep. British stand-up swimmers. Now, after this morning's racing, I think Abby Wood's tactics play very well into Frey Anderson's hands. I completely agree with you. They basically have the opposite tactics. So Abby Wood will be going out fast. I, I think Lucy Hope will join Abby Wood in going out fast. But you know what Frey is going to do. She is the basically a Federica Pellegrini she'll build into the race and the last 50 meters she will in my head I think she'll leave the rest of the field behind and maybe win by half a body length or so that's what I think will happen Um, and you're right I do believe the the early speed of Abby Wood being in the lane next to her is just gonna Freya's just gonna stay on her hip and they're they're gonna turn in quite a quick hundred time and then Freya will come through um, which suits her perfectly yeah, so I'd expect Freya Anderson to go quite comfortably under the Olympic consideration time of one fifty-seven two eight. Abby Wood's PB is half a second off that, if not a tiny bit more. Mm-hmm. She's got, I don't know, is there is there room to play with? Do you reckon she can get down by 0.7? Um, it's difficult because she's very good at the technical side of it. I mean, you'll watch her start and she'll be, you know, mm-hmm. near enough half a body length ahead on the start. So Straight she's away, de- yeah. difficult to make up speed on that sort of side of it. It's just the swim speed and her tactics. Um, it's it, She can't go out slow because she knows that Freya's got the better better half, uh, mm-hmm. the better second half. So she can't do that. She's going to have to go out fast. Um, and that's the, the, this is the tactics that I used to do for the 200, was to go out fast and then give yourself the best opportunity to give yourself that, uh, that consideration time. Is, has she got it in the tank? Yeah, I believe so. Definitely. <laughs> With Freya next to her, just to, to to drag her along for that final 50 and push through that pain barrier. Yeah, I think she can do it. Um, unlikely as it is, but I do think she, she could potentially do it now. I don't know. I, th- I think 0.7 off a PB in Manchester is a lot to ask. Oh, yeah, it's not easy. And I, I'm not convinced. I, d- I think this is now probably her third strongest event. Behind 200, 200, 200 breaststroke. 200 breaststroke and 200 IM. 200 mm. IM, she's a world beater already. Mm. Yeah. 200 breaststroke, she, like we said, we go into it when the meet happens. I think she might go under the British record with Molly Renshaw. Maybe. I think this 200 free, I think she makes a very, very strong relay swimmer. Mm. Well, that's the, the other side of this race is that it's not just a top two. 
that is go to top Tokyo. Four. It's the top yeah. four. So it's not just the, the head-to-head you're, you're seeing here, the two yellow lanes here. You've got to watch out for the, the third and fourth position because they will be on the plane for that relay, uh, and, which makes it more important to get under that two-minute mark. Yeah, exactly. And that's why Tamarin Van Selm's swim this morning mm. was even more important to British swimming than Abby Wood's. Or Freya yeah. Anderson. Effectively, yeah. I to mean, when two second PB suddenly adds so much more depth to yeah. the relay team. Because if uh, going off the PBs beforehand, Lucy Hope was a 158, Abby Wood was 157, Freya 156, Holly Hibbert was on 158. And now you throw Tamron's time of 159 in the mix. It's not guaranteed for for those minor sort of positions. No, it you know? is. Um, so I'm a kind of. No, I'm not really. I was going to say I was more excited about that. No, I'm not. I'm more excited <laughs> about Abby Woods about getting this time. It's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. And Tamara she's looking very comfortable there. Very um, comfortable. Very relaxed, which is good. This is exactly what she wants. Hmm. Um, or the the the, the um, what she wants to be like. You know, the more relaxed you are, the more relaxed muscles you have, that the better performance you get out of them. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited for this right, this meet to start properly. I was excited this morning <laughs> for the heats. The heats yeah. were exciting, but in the final sessions here, we're going to finally see some names filled up onto mm. that Tokyo team. Oh. Well, well, we've still got oh, just the four at the moment, isn't it? Seeing as though Duncan Scott was already going, he's yep. basically he's he's um, cemented his event, hasn't he? The Tunj Lion. So I hope this will be the yeah. the. Is that am I right in saying this could potentially be the first female going? I'm yes. right in saying that, aren't I? Yeah, yeah you are. Yeah, <laughs> don't. Well, there we go. <laughs> I don't want to doubt myself, but yeah. <laughs> God, it's good. It's good. Okay, so like you said, the first thing to watch out for in this race is Abby Wood's start. Mm. Anything from the Dave Hemmings camp, they are good at their technical skills, their underwaters. This yep. is where she gets the leg up on Freya Anderson, but Freya Anderson's last 50, 100 meters, 75 meters. Mm -hmm. She blew me away this morning by how much she had left in the tank and still went a what, low 158? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you have to remember that Freya Anderson, I don't know how, I can't remember how tall she is, but you know, I think six, six, one, something like that. So she's very mm. tall. So she does have that advantage um, going off the walls. But here you go, Abby Wood, straight away, 50 meters underwater. And it's half a body length. Yeah, the pink suit. Yeah, of course. So in lane one, we have Emma Russell. In lane two, Holly Hibbert. In lane three, Tamarin Van Selm. Lane four, Freya Anderson. Lane five, Abby Wood. Lane six, Lucy Hope. Lane seven, Candice Hall. And lane eight, Mia Slevin. Yeah, interesting tactics. So, uh, as I predicted, uh, Lucy, Lucy Hope. Yeah, Lucy Hope. This is what she did in the, this morning, mind you. So, maybe mm. she's getting a bit of an iron for this first 100, but she's gone out hard. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Abby Wood hasn't really joined her in uh, in that fast speed. A little bit. Yeah. So, so, maybe the tactic is to basically hang on to Freya's shoulder and see what she can do at the back end. Mm. Um, but Lucy Hope is, she's given herself the best opportunity here um, by taking it out hard. It's just whether she can hold on to that technique and that stroke rate. Uh, what they're going to turn in here, 57 is that? Or 57-0, which is not slow. No. Um, I think it's very I, similar I, time to what they turned in this morning, actually, if I remember right, 57s, something like that. But Freya yeah, Anson's maybe, already coming through. Yeah, maybe Abby Wood has learned a little bit from Manchester not to take it out quite so hard against Freya Anderson and maybe sit with her a little bit more and see what back-end speed she has. I mean, potentially, but now, of course, this this plays into Freya's hands more and more as this race goes on. But she's already got to the front. Got to the front. Uh, this last turn from Abby Wood will be sensational. So let's yeah, not forget about that. There you go. She's she's now level. That so, level. Oh, Freya's going. Freya's gone. Yeah. Oh wow. But this is what she does. She's she's a back end swimmer. Um, yeah. And Abby Woods has, I don't know. I don't know if it's, a, well, we'll see when we get to the end. I think she should have taken out a bit stronger at the beginning. She's mm. not slowing down. I mean, she's going to touch ahead of Lucy Hope. And actually, she catches the race here. Yeah, it is. Holly, Holly Hibbert is looking good as well for fourth place. So Freya has got a 156.8, Abby Wood oh, a 157.48, no. which misses just outside point By two one, away point less than two. that actually so we can get the scoreboard up for everyone so that's oh oh that's that's oh she's so looks unfortunate good. well would you be i'd be oh that's so Four unfortunate for two. her now we said in our our podcast that this is not the last meet that they can obviously hit these times in mm. there is I would have thought she goes to Tokyo anyway in other events, so they might give her consideration and race her in it anyway. But she also has 
I think Europeans, the Mare Nostrums and a Glasgow meet later on this year to hopefully get that get down by 0.2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah, like you said, four opportunities to do it. The two glass, um, Mare Nostrums at the, I think that's the start of June. Euro- mm. European champs are next. I think that's at the, the beginning of May, which is, well, three weeks away now, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, as disappointing as it is that she hasn't hit that qualification time, Mm. she's got a new pb she which has is good. and that pb has fallen almost two seconds now in the space of two months yeah that's really impressive i think lucy hope also hit another pb it was a big yeah it was a, a I think it was, that's a one second pb for lucy hope um and i think she did the right tactics she took it out hard and gave herself the best opportunity to um to do that time and that's exactly what she's done i feel like that's what abby wood should have done but i can't you can't, can't question too much. her tactics, even no, because she's just PB'd. PB'd. So yeah. um, maybe we're looking into it too much because no doubt Abby Wood would be on the plane anyway for the relay. Mm. But I'm, I'm sure she'll want to be on the individual. individual. Yeah, yeah. Good start, though. Good start. That was actually closer than we thought it would be. Uh, yeah, I thought Freya would have gone away with it a little bit more and I didn't see Lucy Hope be- being that fast. I think Tamarin Van Selm, probably her morning swim took a lot out of her. Possibly. Yeah, but she still went 159, so she still went sub two, yeah. um, which is all you can ask for, really. Um, so she's, I think she's only like 0.3 slower, which is, you know, which is fantastic. Um, Freya Anson doing exactly what we expected, mm. uh, going into that qualification time. Um, I think I overheard some someone say, was it Paul Boy saying that, that you go 155? I, I think that was a little bit um, it's punchy. <laughs> that was punchy. And I, I sort of thought high 56, low 57 would do the job. And that's, that's exactly what she's done. Mm. Um, and she she paced it as though it looked like I believe she could be a strong potential medal winner in this event when it comes to Tokyo. Well, she's on the plane. That's one confirmed. Mm-hmm. First female. Go. Yeah, yeah. About five British swimmers now go in. Hopefully. Yes, I know yeah. the the wording of it all. It's consideration time, but she's going. Let's let's be honest. She's got a PB of one fifty six zero, um, which. I can't remember how good that is when it comes to the world sort of level. Of yeah, course, um, Katie Letecki just went one fifty four zero, I think, at the last meet. I think I got that right, Blimey. which was a, a US record. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was watching a little clip of the last fifty meters of that oh, yeah. race. She was like ten meters ahead, and, and she oh, she was miles was ahead. Like yeah, Alison Smith came in second, and she's not shabby at all. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she's good. Yeah. But um, Ledecky's obviously changed her sort of tactics a little bit because the stroke rate wrote the, the stroke rate was through the roof. Really, I've never seen I it go so fast. Oh, you should see it. But um, yeah, one fifty four zero from Casey Ledecky. So you kind of get the idea of where she is at the moment. Mm. Obviously, bettering the times of what she's normally done. But fantastic swim from Freya, gutting for Abby Wood. Yeah, uh, but like we say, she's got four more meets to uh, put it right. I suppose. Yeah. Well, I, in all honesty, she's on the plane for the 200 IM, the 200 breaststroke. She's pretty much confirmed as well. Yeah. So like we said during the para meet last, last week, the hope is that they just deem her already going. It's not going to take up anyone else's space. Yeah. Let's just race her in the 200 free. I suspect that will be what actually happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, there's no harm in just entering her for the race is there so no okay next up the men's 400 meters freestyle dan this is your event so i'll let you kind of break down what we're expecting here because we we need some pbs to get on the plane we do this is not this is not an easy uh, time to get when you think about the world record is 340 so this olympic qualification time or consideration time is only six seconds off the world record which is crazy to think really um but we've got we've got potential of I would definitely say Dan Jervis has got it in him to go yep. underneath that time. He's he going to have to hit a PB. He did, yeah. He's going to have to go a PB to get that time. Uh, and then whether Tom Dean, who's out in lane two, so we could see an outside burner from him. Um, but at the same time, Stephen Milne, he does have a very quick PB of 346, but not he quite. Does. But... He, he didn't look good this morning. If I'm perfectly no. honest, he looked slightly off the pace. He is a little bit, yeah. So I wouldn't expect him to go. I expect him to go maybe the 350 mark, but I don't mm. think he's going to go quite as quick as 346. Uh, I think this will be between Dan Jervis and Tom Dean. Tom Dean definitely yeah. took the, the foot off the pedal this morning. The first 100 looked really good, and I thought, oh, he's going to go out hard and then just coast the last 200. No, he coasted the last 300. Yes. Um, oh, just, yeah. <laughs> it was so comfortable speed. He's got some big races to end this meet. He's 
looking to qualify in the 100 freestyle and the 200 freestyle as well. Yeah. So definitely saving himself for tonight. Yeah, I would think so. Um, the 200 free is the one he should definitely be concentrating on with um, with relays up for grabs as well. Um, but he's got, he's, got, he's got a good chance of making this time. He's going to have to find a two-second PB, mind you, which is uh, no That's easy lot. feat. Um, so it's, it's going to be tricky for him. But we've got a good field. Should, should we go through the uh, the list? So in lane yeah, one, we've got Charlie you Hutchinson. Go. Tom Dean is in, out in lane two. Cameron Bird, who had a very good swim this morning in lane three. Dan Jervis in lane four. William Bell, who had a three-second PB to get to this final, is actually the second fastest qualifier mm -hmm. in lane five. Luke Turley also swam very well. He was on he the... Was, yeah, he impressed me this morning, Luke Turley. Yeah. He was the one that uh, touched ahead of Tom Dean, wasn't he, in the uh, the second tee, I believe. It, he, uh, he, it, it looked a very tactical swim. Yeah. 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 Not a PB he, for him, he, but actually very very nice heat swim from him. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, lane seven is Stephen Milne, and then Jacob Goodman, uh, out in lane eight, who also did a three-second PB uh, mm -hmm. to, get, to get into the final, lane eight. So um, fantastic swim from him. Hopefully he goes that same sort of time just to, um, you know, prove that he should be good enough to make the final, which of course he is. Yeah. I think what we can expect here is probably probably Tom Dean takes this out hard. I would expect so. And then with Daniel Jervis being the 1500, what he got was 1500 silver at Commonwealth Games, mm. I would expect him to come back in the last 100. But Tom Dean out, out there in lane two will probably benefit him. He'll be away from Dan Jervis's eye mm. and he'll take it out fast. But lo and what? behold, he'll dive in and take it steady now. <laughs> Uh, well, you know what's happening from Dan Jervis. He is a... Oh, you were right with Tom Dean. You were right. Um, Dan Jervis is a pacer. So, of course, being a 1500 swimmer, he's got to hit roughly 58s, 59s per 100. Yeah. Um, he's going to hit steady, I don't know, maybe 56, 57, something along those lines per 100 for uh, this 400. Mm. So uh, he's not really going to drop in pace or increase in pace. He's just going to be at that steady pace throughout. Um, but Tom Dean, like you say, he's going out strong here. I think he's um, going to have to if he gets anywhere near that 46-7. Yeah. I think I really hope he gets there because at ISL, he was one of the most fun racers to watch. Well, he, yeah, I mean... It's, he's, actually, it's like a lot of the Bath swimmers. They know how to race, like properly race. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, and he's one that changes in tactics all the time as mm. well. Yeah. He, he, he's... Um, I, I know the race you're on about at ISL when against Rapsis in the semi-final, I think it was. He, well, in the semi-final, he, he like, just sat on his shoulder, didn't he? Yeah, and then overtook and the last hundred. Yeah, and then in the final, he changed it up and took and it out harder. Took it out hard, and then knew he could beat Rapsis at the end because he beaten him the week before. Yes, so yeah. he, he he's a smart boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He can do it. He can do it, yeah. and he's taken out. I mean, you've got to if you're on the outside lanes, you've got to take it out hard yeah, to, I to be able to see the across the field basically. Um, and the good thing about Kieran um, Kieran Bird here being in between these two swimmers, yeah, he's, he's being dragged along. So don't expect him to. I mean, sorry, do expect him to hit a PB here. Um, this is PB a one fifty point nine. So he's got to go sub one fifty really. Three fifty, yeah. I mean, three fifty, yeah. <laughs> but here you go. So Dan Jervis, he doesn't really change his speed, but it's just a constant, amazingly quick pace that he has. It looks like he goes through the gears. Well, it but does. Actually, it's like just he's winding it up slightly now, doesn't yeah. it? Makes it go in. Turning on a 152, basically. That's, so, pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you raced the 400 free. Are you starting to kick now? 200 to go? Yeah, so that first 200 should have been mostly all arms. It's Easy now you, you start to go to your legs now, which is what Dan Jervis looks like he's doing. In fact, he's the one that's using his legs the most now. Uh, oh, and Tam, Tom Dean, of course. So they know that this third 100 is when you're in the age groups, this is where the 100 that you usually rest to mm. save yourself for the last 100. But actually, when you get to this high level, this is the 100 that you've actually got to push to yeah. get ahead and take advantage of the ones taking the, the, the third 100 steady. Um, Tom Dean looking very good. The, his technique is phenomenal. Yeah, it is. I was going to say, William Bell's positioned himself really nicely as well. He's not fallen off Dan Jervis in lane five. He's still just about on his feet. Um, and I think if he, he stays there, that's a good PB. His PB coming into the meet was a 354. Mm. And he, he's PB'd by three seconds this morning. I think he's on pace to set another PB. 249. So we got to come back in a 57 here. This could be potentially might. He might do it. Tom Dean I'm talking about here. Go in, any. Um, yeah, he's, he's, good. he's given it his all. And actually, I tell you what, Kieran Bird is having a swim of his life here. Mm. He is, he's in second. He's ahead of Dan Jervis. He is. Didn't, didn't think I'd be saying this. If you're Dan Jervis, are you panic mode? Uh, well, you've definitely got to go to your legs. I tell you what, Kieran, 
Kieran Bird is here in the Olympics now. He's on Tom Dean's shoulder. He, he, he is feeling something special. I tell you what, he's on it. And he's right next to that lane rope. So he's trying to get his best, uh, like the, the currents off of Tom Dean. He's and actually, he's flying. Wow. Oh, he's absolutely flying. My God. Oh, my God. He's going to do his time. Is this going to be? This would be an insane swim. Oh, my God. 350.9 is this PB. He's, he's got, got to go 346.7. Has he no got way. there? He's no there. way. Oh, my God. He's got there. Oh, what wow. a swim. Look at the celebration as well. Oh, oh my, my God. Whoa. That's a sensational swim. That's a four second PB. Look at the celebration. Look what it means to him. Well, of course it is. He's going to. Yes. That's an awesome swim. My I did God. not expect that. But he, he, he did everything right. He was in the right lane. I mean, obviously, wow. he didn't force himself to go into lane three and Tom Dean in lane two. But the early speed from Tom Dean helped him, saying on his shoulder. Um, I thought Dan Jervis would do a little bit better than what he did. But at the same time, you can't fault that. That's an awesome swim from Kieran Bird. Wow. I'm stunned. I'm silent. That's, I've got no words. You say that's a four second PB. It's a 4.9 second PB. So it's the best part of five seconds he's just taken off there. <laughs> wow. Where did that come from? I didn't see anything like that. I didn't see that form coming from Manchester. Wow. Wow. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Massive congratulations to him. Oh, that smile is going to take Good ages on you, to wipe. Yeah. On you. It's going to take ages to wipe that smile off his face. Wow. What a phenomenal swim. My God. Wow. Well, there you go. We've got another name on the plane. I was going to say, end the meet now. We've had the best race. (laughs) (laughs) My second race of the meet. And that's so impressive. He can't believe it. Oh, buzzing. Can you imagine what his family must be like when they're watching? Because, of course, they can't be in the building, can they? So they must be at home watching. They must be going through the roof right now. Oh, God. I'm over the moon for the kid. That's that's an incredible swim. That has absolutely blown me away. That's I had be, no idea that was coming. That's going to be difficult is, to top. That's that going to be is difficult to top. for you. That is what yeah. happens. And it's a shame there's not more kind of outside swimmers there because that is an example of what is capable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we were doing the live streams uh, the other week, weren't we, with on the parasites, and they always say miracles happen in para swimming. But we've just seen, I'm going to say, it, I think that was a miracle. I mean, how do you go? <laughs> how do you go 4.9 second PB? when he raced a month ago at Manchester and was really nowhere near that 350 mark. Why wow, he got um, his tip right, didn't he? Jeez, I mean, he's, he's got it absolutely right. Now he gets to do another cycle and uh, aim for that Tokyo. Uh, when is it? In July, isn't it now? Well, Stunning. what a swim. What absolutely a swim. incredible. i got to compose myself now for more racing. <laughs> I know, God. Next up. I can't even remember what's next. <laughs> women 400 meters individual medley. Now this is going to take some good swims to hit this consideration time. Yeah, this is so tough. Um, I mean, the world record holder of T- Katinka Hosu uh, was 426, which is probably the reason why this time is so tough. Mm. Um, we just, um, I mean, we have very good 400 IMS. Of course, Hannah Miley is the um, two-time Commonwealth champion, British record holder. Um, she is on the the downward slope of her career this is basically her last chance um i think she did say that she was stopping after tokyo so this is her last no. hurrah no she's not no. oh no 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 we interviewed or i interviewed her on the podcast she's she's still going until she she says no more she loves racing oh so she's still going and Can't remember that, no? kind of a home commonwealth games don't we so oh yeah of course oh of course commonwealth games is uh next year yeah, that messes with you, doesn't it? Yeah, because it's only a year now. The cycle changes completely. But, but um, her, her swim this morning was the first time she's raced in, I would have thought, close to a year, maybe even 18 months, because she had uh, shoulder surgery and then an- ankle surgery and then shoulder surgery. Mm. And this morning, she, the first 200, she definitely looked off the boil. But the breaststroke leg looked good. Well, that's her strongest freestyle. leg, the breaststroke. Freestyle leg looked okay as well. So there's a chance she makes a big improvement from this morning, but she's got to go down 13 seconds. And for your first meet in 18 months, I think that's probably a step too far. Yeah. I mean, we're talking miracles when uh, Kieran Burt's just gone five seconds. I mean, I don't know what you call it if you go 13 seconds quicker. Yeah. That's uh, it's well, it's a long shot, a very long shot. Um, 
We've got a comment in the in the chat that says Makeda Glenister missed the final. We are gutted by that. We picked her as oh, yeah. a potential dark horse for this event. We just yeah. we think she mis misunderstood how much the two hundred free was take out of her because she did the heats for that and then I just I, 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 there's I don't there's not really I'm trying to find an excuse for her but I, you, swimmers have bad days mm. sometimes it just doesn't click. Um, unfortunately, it seems like that was one of those days for her. Um, she only went 208 and a 203. Yeah. So I don't know if she let off the gas because she knew something wasn't quite right. You know, it didn't feel right. And she knew that the 400 iron was her best chance uh, of, well, you know, of getting a top three position, let's say. Yeah. Um, and she only missed it by 0. Well, 0.4 one hundred, I mean, like 0. 0.04. So she's only just missed out. But at the same time, um, it wasn't the yeah, hardest yeah. final to meet. A 4.58 makes the final and that's not brilliant. Yeah, it's uh, it's disappointing, but it's it's one of those things. Sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of pressure. Let's face it. Yeah. These trials, it, it doesn't get much more pressure than this, um, other than going to a big major meet like commies or the Olympics or something like that. Because trials is it's it's important, um, <laughs> really important. If you want to get to these big uh, these big <laughs> competitions, this is this is the time you got to perform. Well, we've um, spoken to a lot of elite swimmers, and a lot of them say that the most pressure they face is trials, not the Olympics. Yeah. Olympics is yeah. the fun. Let's have what? some fun there. The trial yeah. is the hard bit. I mean, for me, all eyes in this race are Amy Wilmot against the clock. Mm -hmm. She's the only one who can go under the consideration time. I think this is the only event she's doing this week. She pulled yeah, I think so. free because it comes right at the end of the schedule. She didn't want, I mean, these swimmers have got to pay for the hotel for that whole time. That's a good two mm -hmm. round that she's going to yeah. have come out of her back pocket to race the 4-3 yeah 400 IM is solely her focus I hope she gets the time she looked like she took it out quite hard this morning well she's uh, a strong 200 flyer so I would expect her to go out quite strong on the on the fly um well actually she doesn't really have a weak stroke but I know fly she's extremely strong at and I know if she comes back strongly in the free it's just those two middle legs um and there's a lot of good breaststrokers in this uh, right. in this race. Right. Anna Miley is one. For, um, Lily Booker is another one. Yeah. Um, Lily Booker kind of actually slightly swam away from Hannah Miley in the breaststroke leg this morning. It was. Well, yeah, she, she was impressive. Yeah, she's an out and out 200 breaststroker in my eyes. She's got a very smooth breaststroke, and it's the, the, the right kind of breaststroke you need for a 400 IM. Um, but it, going back to Amy Wilmot. It's, it's going to be very tough to go with 336. I know a PB is four. Sorry, the Olympic Commons consideration is 436. Yeah. And I know she's gone 433. That was um, a of games. When that she... was, yeah, was that, that was how long ago was that? Two, two and a half three, years ago? Three years ago, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. But I, I wish her all the best of luck here. I was going to um, say, it's going to be tough because she's not got anyone. I wouldn't expect anyone to be anywhere near her. She's going to be racing by herself against the clock. Yeah, especially if she's going to take out the fly hard, which is what she normally does. Um, she might see people in her like peripherals on the backstroke, mm. um, but other than that, yeah, she's going to be swimming by herself. She's racing against the clock. Um, very best of luck. Um, it's going to be a big ask, but yeah, it's a it's shame. A it's, this event, I think, before coronavirus happened, we would have said this event is quite strong for GB because you've got Siobhan Marie O'Connor, Abby Wood potentially could have done this if there wasn't a scheduling conflict with the two hundred free. Mm. and Amy I mean, Wilmot as well but suddenly now you're looking and it's just Amy Wilmot and it's a tough ask yeah I don't know if Siobhan would have done this race she would have more she would have targeted the 200 IM I would have thought definitely but um, she, she can swim a 400 IM oh yeah of course yeah yeah um, whether it's a, the quick enough to go 436 I'm not quite sure mm. I can't remember the last time she actually swam a 400 IM now mm. um, but yeah right all eyes are going to be on uh, Amy Wilmot here Um Let's just see how she paces the first hundred fly because I do expect her to be half a bud length, maybe even a bud length for head actually after a hundred yeah. meters. Um, yeah, it's going to be a tough time. And then whether a uh, Lily Booker can uh, or Freya Colbert, yeah, put in a good time. So in lane one we have Isabel Goodwin. In lane two, Katie Shanahan. In lane three, Freya Colbert. In lane four, Amy Wilmot. In lane five, Lily Booker. In lane six, Hannah Miley. In lane seven, Orla Adams. And in lane eight, Amelia Monaghan. Yep, and as expected, it's Amy Wilmot, Wilmot to the front. Uh, the classic outside burner tactic. Isabel Goodwin also going out strong from lane one. 
uh, but she's got to from that lane. That's it's almost like the the given tactic. If you're in lane one or lane eight, you you have to go out hard. It's just it's the written rule, isn't it? You um, say this the four hundred IM swimmers can be all over the place for the whole race, and then you don't know who's won until they touch the wall. I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, we've I've always thought that breaststroke is the key leg. Mm -hmm. body, so body length ahead from Amy Wilmot turning in a. It's not come up good, right? But it's about a 64, <laughs> uh, something like that. I've been doing great. <laughs> the graphics are always lovely. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, expect her. She's just going to basically stay at the front and maybe just pull a little bit ahead on this backstroke and then the brush yeah, will come back a bit. She's, she's got to push on yeah. every single leg here. Yeah, oh, well, it's, it's a tough time. You're going to have to. Got no choice. And she's doing just that at the moment. Uh, mm. The stroke rate is quite good. The head is very still, high head position. She's actually gained another body length just off that 50 meters she alone. Has, she has, yeah. Um, so she knows exactly what to do. She has to push it out hard. Um, she knows she's got breaststrokers to catch her up on the on the third leg. It's, they're not going to catch her up at all. In fact, she's oh, pulling away. She's doing exactly what she needs to do here. It's just all eyes on the clock, but we unfortunately Basically. can't see can't see splits. But yeah. I can the get clock. the live scoreboard, and we can see some splits. That's handy. And in fact, actually, the clock has just gone from the live stream as well. Yeah. That's very handy. Pulsion swimming saving everyone. <laughs> the live scoreboard up so people can see. So she's turned in a two twelve. Two twelve, and the time is what four thirty eight. So she's going to have to come back in a two twenty four. Now, of course, this 100 pressure is the one that's going to take the most amount of time here. Um, oh, there we I, go. I would, again. Oh, good. I'd possibly say this is maybe her weakest part, her weakest leg of the 400 IM, of, of, of the 400 IM. Mm. Um, yeah, so, look, again, just to see she, the field behind her kind of close in on her slightly, but yeah. it's not going to yeah. be... How far ahead is she? 10 meters? <laughs> it's, it's enough, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, enough. Lily, I, very, very nice breaststroke down in lane five. Mm. In fact, she's going to be a big threat come next trials, I would have thought, for the 200 okay. breaststroke. Yep. Um, maybe not this this year's Olympics because of uh, Abby Wood and Molly Renshaw. I mean, they still might be around in three years' time, potentially, probably. I would okay. have thought so, actually. They're both quite yeah. young. Um, but Lily Booker will come through on the 200 breaststroke. Mm. Um, yeah. Yes, but Amy Walmart, she's, even though this, she's had to push the 100 fly, she's had to push the backstroke. She has to push this because it's her weakest one. And then I you're only left with the front crawl. So... Well, there you go. Lily Booker's breaststroke is phenomenal, isn't it? it but is. Hannah Miley doing a very good swim. You've got to remember that she's had a so shoulder injury, like you said, an ankle injury as well. Um, yeah, so I'm all not sorts of rehab. I'm not expecting, if I'm honest, I'm expecting her to do better in the 200. I am because there's obviously less butterfly, which is her biggest. Yeah. For. yeah. Well, Amy Warnock's going to have to come back here in a one, basically a 105. I would have thought, which I think is doable. Okay. She could, she we might could do this. She could do this, yes. Lily Booker having a fantastic swim. God, that mm. breaststroke is an absolute lifesaver. Well, her PP <laughs> is a four forty four. I would have thought she breaks that. Uh, going looking at this, yeah, because at the moment Amy Wilmot might just be getting that four thirty six. It's going to be very close. Four oh three. So she's going to have to come back in a thirty. It's going to be so close. She so might just run out in a thirty two. She's going to have to come back in a thirty three ish. Yeah, it's going to be tough. She's going to have to push so hard here. The head's moving yeah. quite a lot, but it's, you know, form's going a little bit out. But you got to just plow through here. The stroke rate's got to stay high. The legs are still going, which is good. No really close. Last ten. Well, she's got six seconds. It might just be out of reach. Oh, oh my god, it's going to be close. Thirty-four, <laughs> thirty-five. Oh my six. God. What? Thirty-five, seven. Yes. Oh, she's got it. She's got it. Great news. Oh. Awesome swim. Wow. Lily Booker, what time's this? 4.43 PB. Lovely. Hannah Miley, 4.45. That's, I, I think, I, yeah, after, that's after the layoff she's had. Four second improvement from this morning. That's very good. Yeah. Amy Wilmot, though, she's on the, she's on the plane. She's going. She's on one. one event, and it's, it's worthwhile. It's paid off. Fantastic work. I mean, she looks absolutely oh. dead. <laughs> <laughs> she's struggling to talk. Yeah. <laughs> But it's one of those races where she couldn't have really an easy leg. She had to push the fly because she's so strong at it. She had to push the backstroke because it's one of her weaker strokes. Same with the breaststroke. She has to push that. And then she had to grit her teeth on that final 100, which she did. Awesome. In fact, she was actually well underneath it in the end. Yeah, I think the clock was running a little bit slow. Yeah. So it was oh. actually under it by a second. Awesome. Another name to add to the list. So that's three in three events. 
three and three events plus the plus the fourth that we had before from uh, the world's tri- world trials, the world's championships last year or twenty nineteen. Sorry. Great way to well, start. Well, 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 well. Start the meet. Right <laughs> up next, the stars in the water. Where do we begin with this where guy? We, yeah, where do we go? Where so, do we start? I mean, if anyone listened to the commentary in the heats this morning, he is what is it, two point five percent faster than oh. the nearest rival in this meet, mm. uh, in this event, in the hundred meters pressure, Adam PT. Now they did they did that calculation with Usain Bolt, and if oh, yeah. they did two and a half percent off his world record, I think there's eight people within two and a half percent of him. That's how dominant this yeah. guy is. And he does not get the credit that Usain Bolt got. No, that's a good comparison actually, because yeah, yeah. Usain, Usain Bolt's time of uh, 9.58 yeah. was absolutely unheard of. I yeah. mean, people weren't supposed to go 9.6, I think I heard. So mm. when Usain Bolt went 9.69, I think it was at Beijing, the first time he broke it, that was just, it was unheard of. Um, and but like you say, PC is in a different dimension on this 100 breaststroke. If we were talking, actually, weren't we? Well, I kind of said to you that if if PT was American, he yeah. would be a global yeah. superstar. He is only a superstar in this country. He should be a global phenomenon. Yeah, it's it's a weird one because I feel like me and you are going to do a podcast on this about British women and the way they publicize their swimmers and promote. It's it's not good enough. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be negative about it because I want to be positive. We want to get people on the plane, yeah, yeah. but it is something that needs to be brought up. I think. Yeah. British women are piggybacking on the on how good Adam PT is, rather than pushing him out there. Yeah, the, if that makes sense. Yeah, kind of a weird one to think about, but I, th- I feel like that's slightly how it is right now. Now he deserves a hell of a lot more credit than he gets. The small yep. is fifty-seven seven. That I think it was the ninth fastest time. Ninth, ninth fastest of all time, and yeah. barely. I I was watching it. I barely blinked. I was yeah. just like, oh, cool. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, whatever. But I think that this is this is the thing. Time. Yeah, this is a thing from British ex swimmers and current swimmers. We just expect it from PC. Yeah. You think as PB plus one? Oh, I suppose that's a pretty good swim. James Wilby went PB plus one, so effectively they've just done the same thing. Yeah. Um, but it's just because he's so far ahead, and you know the the sort yeah. of publicity yeah. that Dressel gets in America. Yeah. That is what PC should be getting in this country. Um, I know he started his YouTube channel, but he is so focused on training that, <laughs> I mean, his recent video, I don't know if anyone's seen it, but his most recent video was him basically f- um, perfecting the first 15 meters. Yeah. And I mentioned it, I think on the live stream in the first Manchester meet, and I thought his starts have got so much better. And then this and morning, this oh, morning, oh. whoa, that wow. only that I, as soon as I saw it, I thought, He's going a world record uh, at Tokyo, <laughs> definitely, because that was the weakest part of his race. He's identified that with Mel Marshall, obviously. Uh, I think the they bought next... some ridiculously expensive camera to properly break yeah. down his start. And you'll see him on the blocks now. He's he's not quite as calm as he previously had been before a race. He slams his foot now into that block. He is getting pumped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite expensive. I, th- I don't know whether it was true, like half a million pound worth of kit. Whether that's true or not, don't know. But uh, either way, it's worked for him. Yeah. Um, it's, he goes into the smallest of details of shrugging his shoulders as he goes up on, on, the, um, on the underwater phase. Um, and it's all these details that make him go the first person under 58. Uh, yeah, first person under 58. The first person under 57. Is 55 um, possible? I, I'm not going to say no. No, I mean I've predicted that he goes fifty six five at Tokyo. That I think he takes off point two point three, something along those lines. Um, he's not going to do it here. I don't think he's going to do it here. He's going to go fifty seven four, something like that, or something like that. Um, I think he goes fifty seven one. Oh, woo, that is quick. <laughs> well, this morning was so good, and now he has James Wilby and Ross Murdoch around him. Mm. The one thing about this morning swim was in his heat, not a single swimmer went sub a minute with him. He was clear yeah. which made him look a hell of a lot faster it made him look even better that's true yeah yeah but he's got i wouldn't say he's got some competition here he's never got competition but he's got two boys behind him who, who are fighting for this spot yeah oh yeah um actually, i was really impressed with ross murdoch because it's been a while since he swam properly i suppose mm-hmm. uh to go a 59 5 um i can't remember what position that puts him in in the world 
but it was sixth. it was was it sixth in the world this year? That's right up there. I mean, we've always been good at hundred breaststroke, um, and we kind of I thought think. with with yeah. James Wilby being a silver medalist at the World Champs uh, 2019, we thought oh he's he's already on the plane for that event, but it's not as easy as that. No. He he's on the plane for the medley relay. That's it, as far as I know. Well, uh, they can pick him in any event they want now. I think yeah. selection. So if they wanted to swim in him in a 400 freestyle, technically, they, <laughs> which is wild to think, but technically that that's how it works. Yeah, but I mean, I would have I would have thought he's on the plane anyway for this race. It depends yeah. how good Ross Murdoch does. It, all think... eyes are on him for me, uh, and of course the time that Petey goes. But it's all on Ross Murdoch. How yeah, it, I, will he come second in this race? I think Ross Murdoch's targeting the 200 brushstroke. For me, that's what I would be targeting. If I were Ross, sorry, um, that's what I'd be targeting and, as well. And again, these two boys, if they, I mean, there's a few 58s that have been swam in the world recently, but if they go anywhere near their personal bests, and I mean, James trains with PT up in Loughborough, mm. if, if they go anywhere near PT, it's a guaranteed silver. Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, so, if you're on if you're on PT's feet, even like, like just off his feet, you're oh, in you're second. It's a, it's, it's a silver. <laughs> it's a, yeah, yeah, potentially, yeah. Um, yeah. Just watch everyone. I'm going to sit back and just watch this before we announce the start le- list. Watch how he's starting now. He's a lot more aggressive he's, on the He pop. is a lot more aggressive, isn't he? But this was his weakest part, wasn't it, at the start? We always said if he could do, nail this start, his time would be absolutely insane. And he's done it again. It's that pull down. Okay. His pull down's got so much stronger. He's got stronger, hasn't he? Mm. See, at this point, he'd be about level because of just how bad the start was. Catch up game. But now he's always in front throughout the whole race, so he has no waves to worry about, which will help James massively. Will good. James Wilby looks very good. Yeah, the stroke rate's high, isn't it? On his turning, shoulder, turning on a what? No, six six. Oh, oh, that's quick. Oh, that's quick. That is quick. Can he hold that? I don't. <sighs> Oh my god, he's looking good. He's looking good, and he's dragging the other two along with him. Yes. Oh my god, your prediction here could be right. Fifty-seven low would be phenomenal swim. James Wilby, I think, goes fifty-eight here. Oh, I don't. Ross, Ross Murdoch's just slightly off the pace, unfortunately. But it's all eyes on the clock. Uh, maybe is he tying up slightly here? Maybe a little bit. Oh, oh yeah. there you go. So fifty-seven three. He did tie up a little bit towards the end. Fifty-eight seven from James Wilby. Very good swim. Ross Murdoch basically did the same time as this morning. I mean, a 57, what, 3.9. That's impressive in April. Very, yeah. very impressive. No one's no no one's beaten that at Tokyo. N- no one. Oh, no, no one. Oh, no, no. He doesn't have to worry. That that medal might as well just be awarded to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He could carry on training as he is, not need to improve anything. Yeah. And he'd win gold. But we know what... What time did I predict him do? I, th- I swear it was a 57.4. <laughs> yeah. 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 Good. Good call. I like, okay. the, I like it when predictions come in. <laughs> it's worth noting that we spoke to Luke Greenbank who is in the same squad as Adam Peaty at Loughborough mm. and although the kind of misconception is that he's already qualified for this he's going to train through it he's not he's tapered for this yeah and I think most swimmers I wouldn't say if, it's not a full taper if I remember it, right uh, it's very um, much it's 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 routine as if he hadn't qualified they haven't changed anything Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've got enough time. Where are we now? We're in April. The try. The games are in July. So it's another three months away. So that's more than enough time to get another cycle in. Um, yeah. So there's no harm in doing a taper now. And it looks like PT's done somewhat of a half taper. Um, I wouldn't say a full taper because you know I, I think he's got a 56 in him. In, in look, he's got a 56 in him because of that start. He always gets those world records at the biggest stage. He doesn't get them at British trials. Oh yeah, he's he's one that thrives off pressure. You, you only have to watch him at the um, ISL in the skins, where I thought he was in, under so much pressure because it was short course. You know his starts and turns weren't the best, and yet he pulls it out of the bag every time. He loves the racing. Yeah, I was going to say suddenly ISL next year, Samanovic mm. nowhere near him. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, we'll see. I mean, the, I was going to say his turns and had a weakest bit, but actually, well, I don't really see a weakness as such. So enough. his turn this morning looked really, really good. Um, very quick around the wall, definitely. Yeah, very impressive. Right, next up on the program is the women's 100 meters butterfly. Now, we we started this, our little prelude that we did 
Yep. I think this is the most competitive race of the night, and I'm so excited for it. I really am. It can go absolutely anywhere. Lane yeah. one to lane eight, I think they have a chance. In theory, they should all be under 60. Mm. Um, I know Yasmin Perry hasn't ever gone under 60, but she had a PB by 0.4 this morning, so she's got... I mean, it's a big ask for another 0.4 again. Um, but it's again... Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, lane 8 is always... Sometimes it's one of those lanes you avoid, but actually, I used to love lane 8 because lane 9 next to you is always free, so there's no waves coming to hit you from that side. Mm. So from that point of view, it's a good thing. Um, but this is the one from day one. This is the one I circled yeah. as the most exciting um, from the race, the race aspects of it, because this Olympic consideration is extremely tough. Um, but you, know, you never know. We've seen a miracle already in Kieran Bird for the 4 I'm not going to say no one's going to get a time because no. Kieran Bird, that was incredible. Yeah. So my standout swimmers this morning, obviously Harriet Jones and Laura Stevens both set new PBs. They did to qualify in lanes four and five, the two fastest qualifiers for me, the most impressive swim was Emily large. Mm. So she goes in lane two. She went at 59 five, but she swam the heat this morning, basically by herself. She was in yes, the she heat. Was. She was the fastest qualifier for it. And the only one who's qualified for this final from that heat. Yeah. She had no one next to her at all. I think if she, doesn't get the team. I know she's unlikely to get the team in this hundred butterfly. If she doesn't win the two hundred butterfly, she looks very good for. Yeah, it's boding well. Same goes for Laura Stevens. Actually, they are the two. They're up there with the favourites to win the two hundred fly, as with Alice Thomas. But Alice Thomas just doesn't quite seem at the races yet. She's lacking that race sharpness, if you like. I wonder but, how much um, of that is to do with Welsh swimming struggling for pool time because we spoke to uh, possibly. We spoke to Zav Castelli, who's at Cardiff Swimming Club. He is an elite funded swimmer at Cardiff, yeah. and he yeah. was struggling for pool time. He was having to drive yeah. Cardiff, uh, drive yeah. Swansea every day. For It wasn't even every day to get in the pool. It was, what, six sessions a week. It so was a high wonder, amount, yeah. I wonder how much that has played into the fact that she's not quite with it because it's completely thrown their training cycle out of out of whack. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure because you look at Harriet Jones, who's a card of summer. Um, mm -hmm. She seems to be thriving. Kyle Booth and the 100 breaststroke hit a PB just uh, with a are, You know, so, you know. These are the younger, less yes. experienced swimmer, whereas Alice Thomas might be set into that routine and it's completely thrown her off. Thrown, yeah, potentially, yes. Um, which is a shame. It is a shame. Uh, I'd never write her off because her underwater work is fantastic. Uh, that's basically what won her the Commonwealth gold uh, back in 2018 because the turns were so good. Um, the turns were amazing this morning as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, I don't think she is in with a shout of winning this race. I think it comes down to the two middle lanes. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say Harriet Jones, I've said from the beginning in our preview that Harriet Jones is the one to watch and the one to beat here. Because she takes it out strong and just stays at the front. She's yep. got the very high stroke rate. Uh, body position is great. Very high hips. Um, doesn't breathe every stroke, yeah. which is which is what you need on a 100 fly, unless you're Michael Phelps, when you've got massive, amazing flexibility and double-jointed everything. Um, <laughs> I mean, you take a bit bitter there. <laughs> he, he had every advantage under the, <laughs> in the world, didn't he, to be a swimmer. But um, yeah, I mean, Laura Stevens is the only real threat to harriet jones i mean kiana uh, mckeens did a pb this morning by point one yeah um, potentially there's one two three four five six six girls here who could go a 58 oh yeah quite possibly so yeah i think and harriet jones wins and may just sneak that consideration time oh i mean do you reckon i mean that's a it's a big ask i mean she pb'd at the first manchester meet the second Manchester meet, she's PB'd this morning, mm. um, which is a good sign. It's a very good sign. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Um, it's going to be with, very tough. With the consideration time being so fast, is there a danger that some swimmers may decide to take this out too fast because they've got to hit that time? They might go out too hard and then suffer for the second 50? Maybe, but that's actually the way I'd approach the race anyway. Okay. Every, every 100 I'm, race, I'm I would take it out hard. It could play into Laura Stevens's hands because she's a 200 fly swimmer. That and same, some, same. Of these, some of these swimmers really take it out hard and she's dragged along, but she's the one yeah. with back end speed. Yeah. Same goes for Emily Large, I suppose, in that, in that respect as well. 
Um, but Harriet Jones is more of the 50 flyer because she's the Welsh record holder for 50 fly going up to the 100. Yeah. Um, and Laura Stevens, Emmy Larger, very much the opposite, going from 200 down to 100. So it's kind of what you like. But I do, I like the idea of Harriet Jones winning this race. <laughs> <sighs> that Olympic constellation is very tough. Um, I think if I'm, I'm her, I'm just concentrating on winning, not trying to go faster than yeah. I need to on the first 50 because you're, you might get on the relay team. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Of, of course. I mean, the medley relay position on the fly leg uh, is up for grabs here. And I circled this one not for the time, but for the actual race itself. Yeah. And yeah, Harry Jones has gone for it. Be a blanket finish between all eight lanes. Yeah, quite potentially. Yeah. She said Harriet Jones has definitely taken this out hard, but she is the yeah. 50, 50 swimmer. She's the 50 specialist. Um, uh, and she puts herself in the best position by being out in front. It's yeah. up to the other girls to make up that ground on her. Uh, turning well, in a what twenty six six very nicely on her shoulder. She's very good at turns, Harriet Jones as well. Yeah, I was going to say she, Laura Stevens looked like she was coming back on her there, but then she's just gone an extra body length ahead off a turn. Yeah, That's the difference of having good fundamentals. Yeah, so Laura Stevens should be coming back now, and yeah, she is. Um, actually, Alice Thomas is not doing so bad either. Actually, not quite going to cause the uh, the one two to be uh, separated. I think Harriet Jones just holds on here oh what's the time oh hang on what's the time oh, oh. she done it oh my god 50 57 7 wait what so she's just gone how a much second, quicker a second faster 0. 0.8 0. 0.8 faster wow oh my <laughs> god <laughs> trials baby no way oh my god some swims can come out of nowhere laura stevens has missed the qualification time by 0.08 by the way that's gutting that's very much like abby wood i would expect laura stevens to be picked for this because she'll likely go for the 200 butterfly i think she'll still get picked for the 100 butterfly but dan is stunned for words i'm sorry i don't know what i've just seen that is an <laughs> awesome swim 57 7 and she's pb'd every time she's got in the pool you used no way. to swim with Harriet up in Cardiff, didn't you? Yes. I mean, she was a bit more of an age grouper when I was swimming down there. Um, I didn't think she would get to this sort of level. Well, I never really saw her, you see. Yeah. Um, but that's an awesome swim. That's a, Yeah. Over to you, Scott. That's awesome. Over to me. <laughs> He's stunned for words. Wow. Two incredible swims this evening. I think Laura Stevens, that bodes so well for the 200 butterfly later on this meet. And that is definitely her stronger event. And... Even though she's missed the consideration time, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think there's still a chance she gets picked for this event because she, she'll she likely secure her spot on the plane later on anyway. Yeah, I mean, gee, just awesome swim. <laughs> let's, talk <laughs> about, let's talk about Laura Stevens. She came back very nicely on the, uh, the final 50 meters, which we expected. So yes, you're right. It bodes well for the 200 fly, which is going to be her main focus. But to be, what was it? 0. 0.7? 0. 0.7? No, sorry. 0. 0.07 off the yeah. time for Laura Stevens. Yeah, she's got three three or four more chances to get that time. Um, I expect her to actually get it now, based on that. Yeah. Um, Harriet Jones, what a swim. My God. <laughs> Next race. Next race. Awesome. <laughs> on to the last event of the evening. I never thought I'd see you this kind of stunned. I didn't expect it. I really thought... Uh, 200 I am, yes. 200 I am. Let's get on to it, because we could potentially see a British record go. And at this rate, I think a world record might go because all these miracles are happening. <laughs> Who knows? In a 154 flat. <laughs> no one is breaking that world record. No, that might be standing for a while. The only one that could be Sato, uh, Sato could be the only one to do it, but I don't even think he could. But well, we'll see. Anyway, um, Dope Scott, qualified fastest qualifier for this event. He went a 157.7 this morning to stamp his place on the plane, mm -hmm. confirm doing the 200 m joe litchfield missed the consideration time by three one hundredths i fully fully expect him to get that time tonight especially next to duncan uh based on these swims that i'm seeing these guys are seriously pumped up for these finals um i now expect him to yes go 157 points maybe a 157.9 um, because he's got it in the tank he's got all the skills and there's no weak stroke his breaststroke this morning was phenomenal um, you'll see his start. He's going to be half body length off the start. His last turn is always fantastic. Um, I believe he will do it. James McFadden went was um, hit a PB this morning. 
He went under two minutes for the first time. Jacob Reno hit a PB, uh, 202.7 for him. Uh, there were more PBs there, I think. Cameron Brooker was a... Say again? There were PBs everywhere qualifying for this final. Oh, yeah. I think Max Litchfield, very much watching his race this morning, felt like he's targeting the 400 IM, and very rightly so. He's mm-hmm. a good three seconds within the consideration time, personal best-wise. Um, when it comes to this event, he has the British record by one one hundredth from mm. Duncan Scott. Yeah, and Duncan Scott looks in good form. So I think that if that record doesn't go now, it goes at Tokyo definitely. Yeah, I would have thought so. I actually didn't realise that the uh, the British record was in that much of a reach for Duncan Scott. Not point not one. It doesn't doesn't get much closer. No. Um, will he break it here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Um, you're confused <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna say no i don't think he breaks it i think he goes 56 9 maybe 57 dead uh, okay. that's what i think but my eyes are gonna be on joe litchfield here um i just want him on the plane because he is he is a talent we need him on the plane um, i want him i want him to secure his spot in the first race because he's got loads more races he's got the yeah. two free the hundred fly the hundred back the hundred back i'm really excited for him in so yeah. if he builds up his confidence here I'm, I'm excited to see what he does for the rest of the meet. I think this yeah. is get your get on the plane now, get your spot secured. Yeah, and just it, and it, go for it for the rest of it. Takes the pressure off. There's going to be a huge weight on his shoulders because I'm, you know, I'm this close. I'm 0.03 off. Yeah. If I just get that now, I mean, it's going to be such a relax, uh, so much more relaxing for him. Um, he looks ready for it. I think he can do it. He does. Let's go through the start list. In lane mm. one, we got Cameron Brooker. In lane two, Mark Shra- Sh- Go on, Danny. Mark Sranick. In lane three, Max Litchfield. In lane four, Duncan Scott. In lane five, Joe Litchfield. In lane six, James McFadden. In lane seven, Jacob Greenow. And in lane eight, Angus Ellison. Oh, Allison. 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 Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I, I, you obviously, every time you watch Joe swim, you tell him, mm-hmm. you tell everyone, watch all his, the time. Watch yeah. his turns. I'm going to say for everyone to watch something different. Watch okay. his breaststroke leg. Mm. This caught me completely by surprise. He's obviously identified that as his weakest uh, leg. Well, it's not now. But it's, not, it's now. not now because he's obviously put so much work into it behind the scenes. Uh, I, so I now it's part of New York breakers and swimming with Michael Andrew and Marco Koch and people like that. We swam with some very, very good breaststrokers at ISL. So maybe that's that's helped him out a bit. I yeah, think... Possibly. What was it Michael Andrew and TYR series went at one fifty seven nine, the other, and that didn't look very good when he swam it. <laughs> he took it out like an absolute madman. Yeah, and I think after the first one hundred, he was on pace with Lochte's record, and then he came back in a thirty point for the freestyle. But suddenly he, tonight's he, race, I think, is going to put that time into a bit of perspective for Americans. I think Michael Andrew might well go for the two hundred IM. Yeah, I mean, uh, you were telling me about Chad Leclerc doing the same sort of thing as well, taking out hard on the 200 IM, is that right? Uh, and then dying towards the end. Yeah, um, It's a difficult one, 200 IM. It's not one you sort of sprint kind of as such. I would, I always say that 200 free is a sprint, but 200 IM is a difficult one because you're using all of the muscles in the body in different ways, doing mm-hmm. all the four strokes. Um, so you do have to pick and choose the pacing quite carefully. Uh, breaststroke is the main one for me. Um, yeah. Joe Litchfield has obviously identified that as the, the point that you need to practice. Um, as I just take a look at Joe Litchfield's start. Sorry, hang on. Yep. Oh, oh, not as strong as before. That's interesting. Taking Very it quite taking it fast but steady on the uh, fly. Um, He's but yes, yeah. <laughs> Say again. He you was what? looking around slightly then on his butterfly. Yeah, I don't know if he, he did. Sure if he's just a little bit. I don't know how to pace this fly leg. I don't think he had the best of starts. So I think he's maybe looking around to see how Literally. much of an impact that bad start had. They maybe. go on, back on the shoulder of Duncan Scott. And yeah. then the next the next leg, the breaststroke leg, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go past Duncan, going off this morning swim, and then Duncan destroys him on the freestyle. But yeah. I, he looks so good, like unexpectedly impressive in the breaststroke this morning. Yeah. Um, well, wow. They're turning basically together. You know Duncan Scott's got the best freestyle uh, in the field, so you know he's going to be winning the race based off that. Um, but actually, Duncan Scott's breaststroke is very underrated. He's got a very okay. strong breaststroke. Um, 
he doesn't hold his glide very long. So as soon as he extends his arms, he pulls very, straight away. Very fast stroke. And right? actually, he's pulling away from Joe Litchfield here. I'll tell you what, Joe Litchfield's falling back into um, lane six as well, isn't he? Yeah, who is lane six? James McFadson. He's having a very good swim. Uh, Max Litchfield just out of reach, so maybe he's... Um... It's, it's, I'll tell you what, is James McFadson going to do another wild Kieran Bird swim here? Quite no, possibly. Oh, look at that turn. Oh, my. He's still under, still under. <laughs> awesome turn. Well, that's just saved him second place. Um, <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Just he gets under the time. I think we're kind of forgetting how fast Duncan Scott's actually going here. He's actually flying. Which record? He 56. might be just outside it. Oh, sure. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a British record. It's a British record. It's a British record. <laughs> <laughs> it's a British wow. record. It's a British record. Joe Litchfield is underneath the time. He splash, yes, smashes there. the water. He's done it. Wow. Duncan Scott, a 155.9. Jesus. God, where does that put him in the world? Where does that put him in the world? That surely must be top three. That has to be, doesn't it? Yeah, if anyone knows, let us know in the uh, YouTube chat and we will we will put that up because, blum it now, there has been some good swimming tonight. Oh Jeez. my God. I'll tell you what, you were talking about Joe Litchfield's breaststroke, but actually it was Duncan Scott's breaststroke that got him that time. It was. Let's take a look at some of these times. What's James McFadson gone? 158. <laughs> Another second PB for James McFadson. Max Litchfield, 158. I think he's targeting the 400, I'd say. It's more of a cobweb swim for him. But Duncan Scott, 155.9. That's almost a freestyle time. <laughs> <laughs> Not his freestyle time, maybe yours. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, give me some credit. I can do a little bit better. <laughs> but wow. I'm really glad. I'm really glad for Joe Litchfield there because he, he deserves it. He, he puts in so yeah. much work in training. He was one of our first guests on the podcast. Um, and he, he concentrates so much on the, the fine details of swimming, the starts, the turns, the underwater phase. Um, and he's identified that breaststroke is the, 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 the stroke that he needs to work on. He's done it. And now he's on the plane to Tokyo. Huge congratulations to him and the massive PB for Duncan Scott. British record. <laughs> what a night's racing. This I is day that, one. That's a consideration time in every event. Yeah. What a yeah. way to start the meet. God, if that doesn't build confidence in every British swimmer who's racing right now, I don't know what will. British swimming's flying. Wow, Jeez. we're going to keep this as professional as we possibly can. But I am slightly stunned by some of the times that we are seeing tonight. They are good. They're awesome, aren't they? I mean, in our preview, we kind of said that some of them are, are so difficult. And actually, one swimmer in each race that is on well, the plane. There's a lot of them tonight I didn't think they'd get. Yeah, I know. That yeah. fly, I didn't think they'd get. I think Amy Wilmot in the 400 IM, I thought that was an ask. Yeah. Wow. I've, I've been proven wrong. And rightly, rightly so. Yeah. I mean, they, they've done it right. I mean, we were talking about the, the Russian trials that had just been, the trials, at, uh, the J Japanese trials. They were all swimming fast. But actually, these guys doing better as of right now. Bring doing on better. the meat. Jeez. It's going to be good. Right. If anyone has any comments or questions to put to us, now is the time to do it before we sign off for the night. We will hang around for five, ten minutes while Dan tries and get some words out because... <laughs> Um, but basically we are back every single night this week. We have put time and effort into bringing you guys live reactions and alternative commentary and answering all of your questions that are coming in. I think someone's done the research for us, by the way. Oh yeah. What time? What's uh... the best time in this? this by year? over a second. Wow. Is he a middle medal face? surprise me. Well, I'd love to see him do a 200 free right now because I've been bigging him up since how long now i've always said that he's the one to watch for the 200 free and um that Last 200 week. yeah unfortunately i now have to wait how many days like three it's days for that race 100 fly don't forget and the 100 free the 100 free i'm excited to see what he goes 100 yeah free, yeah i think is a bit of a nothing event a nothing race i'm not quite sure that one well you might it wouldn't surprise me if he pulls out of that i don't know we'll see he's not one to do that mind you there but you um and that time would have won world champs He's, 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 he's racing that. How many medals can he win at Tokyo? You've got honestly two, be quite two, a few three relays. If he does the mixed relay, but I'm not sure he will. Mm. And he's got 200 free, 200 IM, 100 free is probably a bit of a stretch. So he's potentially up there for four, maybe five medals. Yeah. How has this guy not got a bigger reputation than PT? Well, if he were to do that, 
he would be our most successful swimmer at one meet, would he not? Oh, great COVID protocols there, passing a microphone. <laughs> I shall comment on that. <laughs> They're covered in chlorine, it's fine. I'm really happy for Joe, really absolutely. happy because he absolutely deserves it. And now he can almost relax because he's no, he knows he's on the plane. 100 back show he's got coming up. Uh, 100 back tomorrow. I cannot wait to see what he goes. That last turn got him that time. Oh, oh, definitely. Kids watching that last turn is the reason he got that time and is going to the Olympics. Yeah, practice your turns, practice your underwaters. Absolutely, and uh, hundred backstroke is a prime example to see it. Mm. We actually we see both men and women's hundred backstroke tomorrow, don't we? Really exciting. That is kind yeah. of the pick of the races tomorrow. Absolutely, well, absolutely. Backs have some insane battles. I think most. I think both of them are three swimmers into two spots. Yeah, yeah. You see, see where we go from there. That's just going to be exciting. It's going to be so exciting, isn't it? Oh, God, jeez. I'm rolling. What a day. What a day. Right. I think that just about rounds up this live stream from Propulsion Swimming. Thank you so much for everyone who has joined us. Hopefully, we will see you all tomorrow evening. From myself, out. Oh. <laughs> myself, Scott. I've really enjoyed this evening's racing. I cannot wait for more. I will see you soon. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for joining. Thanks, everyone.